14 teams came to Greenville, South Carolina on the hunt for a title. Only two remain, and the fans have lined up to see the two best teams in the SEC, Tennessee and South Carolina. The Gamecocks, the number one team in the nation, led by the player of the year in the SEC, the defensive player of the year in the SEC, Aliyah Boston. But Rakia Jackson, she has become an automatic bucket over the last two games here in Greenville. One will be crowned a champion. You're watching the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament presented as part of ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. We welcome you to the SEC on ESPN. Orange and Garnet will decorate the well this afternoon here in Greenville, South Carolina, a rematch of the 2015 title game. The South Carolina Gamecocks have not lost a game. They are on a 37-game winning streak. They look dominant in their semifinal victory over Ole Miss, but it was drama for the Tennessee Lady Vols. They beat LSU after trailing by 17 points, their first ranked win of the season. Let's go, champ day here in Greenville, Courtney Lau, alongside national championship winning head coach and soon to be Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck. Holly Rowe on the sidelines for us today. And wow, how exciting to see two teams, Tennessee and South Carolina, that have such a history in this tournament. Do you think this game's a big deal? Have you seen the crowd? The people have come in, a lot of orange, a lot of garnet in this building. We expect a hot start tonight. Yeah, and they're gonna see some amazing basketball players. It starts with Aaliyah Boston. She set the tone in her very first college game. She had a triple-double and she hasn't stopped. Oh, the accolades have continued to come in. She was the national freshman of the year in her first season. What does she top that with? But becoming a first team All-American the following two. Not just an All-American. Last season she was the National Player of the Year and she is making a strong case this year to repeat because she is consecutive SEC Player of the Year and SEC Defensive Player of the Year as well. And she is projected to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft coming up and guess what you're not just going to see one projected draft pick we've got three in this game as Tennessee has two of them Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson are both supposed to be two top 10 picks in the WNBA Holly Rowe is midcourt with both head coaches well coach your team has been chasing perfection all season but how does the memory of what happened in this moment last year been driving them I mean, anytime you take a loss, if that's your last loss, you don't want that feeling ever again. So, I mean, this environment here, I hope is a pro game cops to put us in a position to get a win. Thank you, Coach. And Coach Kelly Harper, your team is coming off one of the biggest comebacks in school history. What is left in the tank for this emotional game tonight? Hey, it's March. You got to play. Doesn't matter how many games you played, how long you played. You got to get everything you got right now. Thank you, Coach. I promise you this, it's going to be loud in the arena today. Two fan bases that didn't have to travel more than two hours to get here to watch their teams play for a title. And it's going to, I believe, it's going to be worth the drive over. Tennessee starting out in a man-to-man. -man. And Raven Johnson got the start for South Carolina. Red shirt freshman. Yeah, Kiara Fletcher will not be available today. She was injured yesterday. She is officially listed as day-to-day -day with a lower leg injury. Here's Tennessee's starting five. We saw Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson. They really step up. And remember, in this tournament, they've combined to average 50 points a game. Rakia Jackson averaging 30 points a game in her first two outings here, representing the Lady Vols in orange. Jackson loves the mid-range game, so that's a pretty good shot for her, but the fadeaway is going to be short. And Raven Johnson, this is what she brings. She can push pace. She does, and that's what normally Don Staley is able to do when she has Kiara Johnson start the game. When she Kiara goes Fletcher. Raven, Kiara, I'm sorry, Kiara Fletcher, when she starts the game, Raven Johnson is able to bring and turn the speed up another notch. That's two buckets in a row for Aaliyah Boston.
You heard Holly ask Don Staley about this time last year. South Carolina made it to the championship game of the SEC tournament. It was in Nashville, but they were upset by Kentucky. And before they left, the South Carolina players told us Aaliyah Boston gathered them together and said, this is a business trip. Remember what happened last time in the SEC tournament. There's Jordan Horston finishing underneath. Horston can certainly pack a stat sheet. She does it all. Caroline Stripling has the responsibility of guarding Aaliyah Boston. Stripling number 11 in orange for Tennessee. Raven Johnson is going to take the three. That freshman looks cool, calm, and composed. She is ready for this moment. You know, I asked Don Staley at shoot around today about Raven Johnson because she always talks about her being fearless. And she said, yes, yeah, she's fearless, but I'm fearful. <laughs> I don't think she needs to be fearful. Shoot out already, Rakia Jackson with Rakia, the three. Rakia Jackson's not fearful either. Since she has come to Tennessee, all she has done is produce. Bree Beal giving up the three, driving in. Still plenty of time Ooh. for South Carolina. Uh-oh! Bree Beal to the bucket! A little trickeration. Four for four for South Carolina. They are locked in. You cannot tell me that they do not have redemption on their mind. Last meeting between these two teams, it was 10 days ago. Zaya Cook trying to finish in transition. And Tennessee had a 10-point lead in the first half on South Carolina. They were shooting lights out, and they were doing a nice job of getting stops against South Carolina. To start the second quarter, that was a total different story. South, it was South Carolina then that took control in the second and third. Then Tennessee made a run in the fourth. Caroline Stripling got loose by herself on the block. She has stepped up to fill the role that Tamari Key left as Tamari Key out with blood clots. They discovered that around December 5th. So impressed with how Caroline Stripling has been able to come in. She brings the physicality, but she's willing to do what Kelly Hepper asked. Aaliyah Boston working six points already. But right now, Tennessee is trying to cover Boston with single coverage, not bringing a double team. How long will that last? I'll swing it over to Rakia Jackson. Ten seconds now for the Lady Vols. Offensive foul on Striplin. The South Carolina got off to a hot start. You got Bree Beal. You got a defender that's coming in playing offense. And then Tennessee getting the ball inside in the paint. But the SEC Player of the Year is doing what Aaliyah Boston does, and that's get buckets. Boston already with six. Caroline Stripling checks out, but Jillian Hollingshed has checked in for Tennessee. How important was she yesterday? Huge. Jillian Hollingshed came in, and the thing that was most impressive was not only was she she was requesting the basketball, but she was dominant inside defensively. I don't know if she was requesting it or demanding it down low. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Horson's jumper is on today. You know, the past couple of games, she was really a question mark, kind of adjusting to the rims. She's shooting it well right now. Well, you see yesterday, she started three for 12 and then turned it up in the fourth quarter, four from six from the field. Free peel. Bully ball. I knew it was coming. I'd say it's a hard choice to make between Aaliyah Boston and Bree Beal for SEC Defensive Player of the League. I, the, excuse me, of the year. Of the, it went to Boston. Yeah, I, I think that's just really hard with the, you know, you can see Aaliyah Boston blocking shots, but you don't see the constant advert, the aggravation that Bree Beal causes on whoever she has as her primary defender. It got her in the starting lineup, her defense did, as a freshman, and she has stayed there ever since. And she looks like she just has so much fun playing defense. Horston got her around, got around her that time. Horston is playing with great focus and pride. She's got championship on her mind. 
This is the first time that Jordan Horston has played for an SEC tournament championship. She didn't even get to play in this tournament last year because she was out with an injury. Zaya Cook, too much on the baseline, but guess what? She got the best helper in the land, Aliyah Boston. Eight points for Boston. Tennessee's hit five of its last seven shots. The execution has been disciplined. It's been intentional on both, both ends of the floor. Eight seconds for Rakia. Boston takes over, guarding her. Little bounce off the backboard. You can tell Rakia Jackson wants that battle, that challenge with the isolation with her in the middle of the lane. Raven Johnson's going to pull this out inside to Boston. Gets it back, reposting. Double team, splits it, hasn't missed a shot. Yesterday, Tennessee trailed by 17 points against LSU, came back in one. Feel like they've talked about that because you cannot do that against this South Carolina team. Tennessee has matched their intensity so far. Aaliyah Boston, though, she loves the big stage. 10 points, a perfect five for five from the field, looking like the National Player of the Year. Well, we're flashing back to 2015. It was the changing of the guard, if you will. The last time Tennessee made the SEC Tournament Championship game, they faced South Carolina, and South Carolina won its first tournament title. The first 35 years of this tournament, Tennessee won 17. They still have more tournament titles than any other SEC program. But six out of the last eight seasons, it's been South Carolina cutting down the nets. And Don Staley has talked about, listen, that's that's the last loss that you've experienced. You want to right the ship right there. You want to go, okay, we gotta, we've got to correct some things of what happened when you got to the championship game when it comes to the conference title. Jillian Hollingshed at the free throw line. Holly, what's the Tennessee huddle like right now? Well, Kelly Harper really pleased with how her team is battling. She complimented them on how they've started this game and said, keep battling, keep battling. Then one of her assistants pointed out that they've got to do a better job on Aaliyah Boston when she pivots. Aaliyah with that great footwork, her up and under, her ability to escape defenders. They want sounder, better defense on Aaliyah Boston right now when she makes those moves. I saw the same thing, Holly, that Kelly Harper did in the execution that Tennessee had offensively. They're not in a rush. They're taking their time. They're getting the shots that they want. Defensively, they're being very patient right now. Yes, Aaliyah Boston's getting some pivots, but no useless fouls. Well, that is a foul on Aaliyah Boston right there, an offensive foul. Her first. She has started this game five for five from the field with 10 points, two rebounds. Tennessee getting those shots that they want. As you mentioned, they've hit four of their last five. That's going to be an offensive foul on Jasmine Powell. Her first. I have to say that I am really digging Kelly Harper's jacket. Is it the sparkles for this, you? Oh, I love the sparkles. Champ Day, you gotta have something fancy. You gotta look, you gotta breath, you gotta dress for success. Holly certainly did with those shoes you got on Holly Rowe. Well, mine is nothing compared to the sequin stripe down Kelly Harper's pants and her matching sequin shoes. But don't sleep on Don Staley, she's wearing Gucci. So um, I, we, we're just bringing it. It is definitely a championship type of day. <laughs> oh, it's all about putting on the Ritz. Free Beal. Misses the three, but Brie Beal, she already has five assists. Her career high is six. Ten seconds now. Cardoso looking for help. Leticia Me here. She's fouled. 
That's the second on Jasmine Powell. Uh, Leticia Mihir has been phenomenal in this tournament for South Carolina. She has gone back-to-back -back days with double-figure points for the first time this season. Yeah, she had 16 in the quarter, 17 in the semifinals. And listen, if you are playing well, Don Staley's going to give you more minutes. And so the production that South Carolina was getting from the Gamecocks, from Ami here, of attacking the glass and also attacking the paint, like that was, they were producing good things for South Carolina. My favorite part of her stat line yesterday, seven assists, one turnover. That's huge. She's Let's an Olympian, played in the Tokyo Olympics for Team Canada. Cardoso just covered up by Tennessee's defense. Walker on the ground, giving up to Jordan Horston. And this is a good matchup here. They've got length. That's the second behind the back pass that I have seen from Jordan Horston today. She's feeling fancy. Shot got altered there, and she stepped out of bounds. Limiting turnovers for Tennessee will be important. Friday in the quarterfinals against Kentucky, they had 22 turnovers. Kentucky turned those into 38 points, and that kept the Wildcats in the game. As long as Tennessee is taking care of the basketball and executing themselves, themselves offensively, look and shoot a high percentage. That's what you've got to do against South Carolina because there are times that South Carolina can go through some scoring droughts. And when that happens, you've got to be ready offensively to take advantage. South Carolina is in a scoring drought right now, over two minutes. Bree Beal heard me. She said, uh-uh, we're good. Well, guys, don't sleep on Bree Beal. She has been a defensive stopper for four years, but her offense is how her career started. A three-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Illinois. Only Candace Parker has done that. She can score. She's a pro, and she is showing that she is more than just a great defender. She said, I'm taking my role, and I'm expanding it. But don't sleep on her. She can put up points for this Gamecock team. And her defense is contagious. Look at Letitia, Letitia Meher with the block. I, look, next set ball, we got to see that block because she said, get that stuff out of here. South Carolina had 14 blocks yesterday. That's the third most in SEC tournament history. Jillian Hollingshed, a pretty shot on the baseline. Hollingshed has been a huge impact for the Lady Vols. Ever since that Connecticut game, she proved to herself she could play against any kind of physicality, and she's been huge. Fouls on Jordan Walker. Yesterday in the post-game press conference, Rakia Jackson talking about Jillian Hollingshed. She goes, she is our X Factor. Look, she's a young player, but she works so hard, and it's paying off. She's an X Factor for us. We're finally getting to see the benefit of the hard work that Hollingshed has put in. Through her career, when she was at the University of Georgia, she was had an illness, and then she had some injuries. Now she has been completely healthy at Tennessee, and that hard work is starting to pay off. Zaya Cook at the free throw line. Her first point today. She's South Carolina's leading scorer, averaging 15 a game. 14 points yesterday in that semifinal win over Ole Miss. Four point five. Horston looking for a quick shot. Knocked to the ground and got it in her anyway. Jordan Horston. An SEC tournament championship is on the line. You want to be able to bring it from the start. It has been competitive, competitive start to finish, and Jordan Horston knocks that down. Look, we got a two-point game. 
South Carolina, we mentioned it, 14 blocks in the semifinal yesterday against Ole Miss. That's the third most in SEC tournament history. So not surprised that this nasty thing made its way into this championship game. Because of the length that, that South Carolina has and Leticia Mehir's agility, even though the defense may think they've got a free lane to the basket, and Mehir says, uh-uh. Drea Carter talked about the blocks of South Carolina on game day today, and she used an example of Leticia Mihir, a very similar style block. Rakia Jackson brought her shot. That's a long two for Rakia. She's got eight points. That's a long two. That was. Is it, a, is it a long two? Yes, it was a two. All right, so she's got seven. Raven Johnson in the lane. Race for the ball. Zaya Cook's going to take it. And she gets around Horston. Cook's first field goal. That's the kind of play that will get Zaya Cook going. Beating, winning a 50-50 ball and being able to run out and get the layup could get her going. Now her field goal percentage, a career high this season, talking about Zaya Cook. Caroline Striplin. That three rattled out. She can shoot that, though. Up ahead to Leticia Amihir. South Carolina thrives in transition. Don Staley has said numerous times, Leticia Amihir is the most versatile player I have ever coached. She has played the one, the three, and the four for South Carolina. Now check out Aaliyah Boston defending away from the basket and a quick player like Rakia Jackson. Horson going against a me here. Rebound by Cardoso. So we got Leticia Me here playing a three right now for South Carolina. Boston in the high post. She's looking for Cardoso. Trying to work around Striplin. Zaya Cook. Fouled. Raven Johnson, a red shirt freshman, as soon as he gets the basketball, eyes up. And Leticia Amihir getting out, sprinting. And then Zaya Cook winning the battle 50 50, competing. Who will give in? We got a battle one going on today. How fun is this game? I love it. <laughs> Well, guys, we're seeing a great battle right now between Zaya Cook and Jordan Horston, and they have been defending each other, playing against each other since they were in the sixth grade. They grew up in Ohio, Zaya in Toledo, Jordan in Columbus, and then they played on USA Basketball together. They have a close relationship. Jordan said, she's my sister. She picks me up, texts me, makes sure I'm okay. So she said, when we step on the floor, we are not friends anymore, as you can imagine, but close friends. and making everybody in, in Ohio proud where they've come from. I love the little photos of them. What a throwback. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but then to see them ferociously competing when they were trying to run down that basketball together. And two players that game, their games have just continued to get better every year of their careers. Zaya Cook, her mentality this season has really progressed her game as well. Well, she's such a competitor. And Doc Staley has talked about how much pressure Zaya Cook put on herself in her first three years at South Carolina. Now in her senior season, she is just playing. Forget the expectations. Forget what you're trying to, that you've set goals for yourself, and just play. Those things will come if you just focus on doing what needs to be done at the present time. Last touch by Tennessee. It'll be South Carolina ball. Rakia Jackson checks back in, replacing Jasmine Powell. Jackson with seven points, three of five from the field. Horston's leading Tennessee right now with eight points, but she's on the bench. A 
for me here, back to Cook. Layup, Zaya Cook. 7-0 run by the Gamecocks. First run by either team in this game. Nakia Jackson almost had it, but the scoring drought for Tennessee, two and a half minutes continues. That whole play happened because of the screen rescreen and then the handoff from Leticia and me here, and then the hard drive to the left. Strong, protect the basketball and finish by Zia Cook. And Tennessee trying to bring some full court pressure now. What's been impressive, Courtney, is Raven Johnson. She's handled running this point guard's position, understanding the majority of that responsibility is going to be her on her today without Kiara Fletcher. Yeah, Kiara Fletcher injured, injured yesterday, unavailable today. That was Aaliyah Boston's first miss of this game. She was five for five. Meanwhile, Tennessee's offense, last five possessions, a turnover, and they've gone 0 for 4 from the field. Jordan Walker was trying to get the foul call, no whistle. Isaiah Cook might have just gotten away with the travel. Well, I think she carried it because she saw Raven, decided to pass it, but it was too late. Sarah Puckett for three. Look at Leticia and me here. She's doing it all. One of the longest wingspans on the team paying off. Zaya Cook, cooking. Serve it up, Zaya. Tennessee calls timeout. South Carolina on a run. Leticia and me here. She has taken off where she left off in the first two games here in the SEC tournament, finding Cookie, 4-3. Coach Harper got into us at halftime, you know, just telling us to be tougher and have some tenacity, and we have to punch back. They believe, they fought. Wins are hard to get. Big wins are harder to get. The adversity that we faced this year was so tough, and for us to be here still standing, um, it just goes to show our mental toughness. It is a big deal to be in a championship game of the SEC tournament. We're here, and we're not done, we're not finished. Last night, it was all Lady Vol fight. Tennessee found themselves down by 17 points in the second quarter, tied for the largest comeback in Tennessee postseason history. They took down LSU, the number four team in the nation. Their first ranked win of the season. Tennessee had lost its last 11 meetings were against ranked opponents, and that's going to be a travel on Letitia and me here. But they're going to have to dig down on this one, too, because South Carolina's on a 10-0 run. Well, when Tennessee went, hit that scoring drought against LSU and called a timeout, one of the things that Kelly Harper did is she called a play and ran it to somebody else other than Jordan Horston and Rekia Jackson. Caroline Striplin scored a bucket, and that helped Tennessee get on a run. Well, guys, that was the late game last night for Tennessee. They didn't get back to their hotel till about 10 o'clock. And Cook takes it all the way there. And Tennessee said, some of the players told me they didn't get to sleep until about 3 o'clock this morning. It was just hard to turn off the excitement, turn off their brain. But they promised me they had legs, they had energy. They need to dig down and find it right now. Hey, Holly, we saw that energy to start this game. But now there's been a scoring drought. It's over four minutes right now for Tennessee and a 12-0 run for South Carolina. It was a little bit of a concern for me and watching how much Tennessee celebrated with getting their first rank win of the season, advancing to the finals. You would have thought that was the night where they had won the championship. And to be able to amp that down and come in today and not have a game hangover, really, of so much exuberation in that one. They started out very focused. They've got to get back to how they started the first quarter. Jordan Walker hits. Maybe that's what Tennessee needs. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, Zaya Cook has scored their last eight points. Jillian Hollingshed is not a guarding Aaliyah Boston out on the perimeter at all. Totally backing off, daring her to take that shot. Six seconds. They'll throw it into Boston. Short on the turnaround. Ball up ahead to Rakia Jackson. 
And a traveling violation. Seventh turnover by Tennessee. You know, a common factor, someone other than Horston or Jackson that can score buckets. That's Jordan Walker with the step back over Aaliyah Boston. And Walker, such an experienced player, decided to come back. She's a smart player, too. Already has her MBA, getting a second master's degree. Zaya Cook is fouled. That's her first. Jordan Horston whistled for the foul. Cook 10 points here in the second quarter. Make it 11. Champ Week's going to roll on tonight. Two more women's title games coming up next. We will have the Big Ten Championship game. Ohio State and Iowa here on ESPN. That means Kaylin Clark's going to be ready. And on ESPN2, the Pac-12 title game for Washington State and UCLA playing in the Pac-12 championship game. Cami Etheridge has Washington State playing extremely well. And Corey Cope close with UCLA. Yeah, Kiki Rice, a freshman, is playing well in the Pac-12. Jordan Horston, a good look at the basket, gets her own rebound, puts it up. Transition stopped by Horston, intercepted. Turnovers by LSU allow Tennessee to get back in the game. South Carolina can't fall into that same rut. Holling Shed feeding Horston, who's posting up Zaya Cook. Horston with the height advantage. Gets a little bounce right in the lane. Tennessee in a zone now. <clears throat> we saw Tennessee shift and change their defenses yesterday against LSU. Really broke a rhythm offensively for LSU. Offensive foul on Zaya Cook. It's Jordan Walker taking the charge. I love the determination that Jordan Horson is playing with right now. Look, she is doing work. She misses the first one. She stays in there after to get the second, then recognizing she's got a height advantage on Zaya Cook and makes it pay. Jordan Horston yesterday became one of two Lady Vols all time with 1,000 points, 700 rebounds, and 400 assists. The other one, Alexis Hornbuckle. Wow. Good company to keep. It really is. Jordan Horston has really played very well. Here in this tournament, very focused, very determined. She's been a tremendous leader for the Lady Vols this season. Almost a three minute scoring drought, or a drought without any field goals for South Carolina. Jump ball, possession arrow, Gamecocks. Well, coming up on the All-State Halftime Report, Ellen, the game got you covered. First half reaction from this game. Plus, they're going to take a look at the ACC Tournament game notes that's coming up at the half. So cool to see this morning. Game day was here. How was it out there on the set? Oh, it was great. You had both Tennessee fans and South Carolina fans out there enjoying the preparation that we had, getting ready for this game, and really the whole slate of conference championships going on today. Jordan Horston in transition. Tennessee, a 6-0 run. Jordan Horston, all six of those points. Tennessee hadn't been in the final since 2015. Jordan Horston really making the most of being here today. Leticia Ami here, four points now. Now, Tennessee has not won an SEC Tournament Championship since 2014, but they have won this tournament more than any other school 17 times. And me here almost had the steal, eight seconds. Pocket in the corner. Rakia Jackson fighting for the offensive rebound. Pocket post up. 
I got keeping an eye on the rebounding. Right now, though, both teams neck and neck. Tennessee is actually out rebounding South Carolina by two. Reveal short. Tennessee. That's the second on Jillian Hollingshed. Now somebody's got to pick up Zia Cook. You don't want to allow her just to catch it. 1.1 second. There's enough time to catch it and get a look at the rim. Cook will from half court. What a ball game we have. Today's Worth a Watch brought to you by Principal Aaliyah Boston and Zaya Cook have combined for 24 points, six rebounds. These two stars, little redemption seeking here on this SEC Tournament final stage. Dawn Staley is with Holly. So coach, you had Aaliyah Boston early, Zaya Cook late with a little rebuild thrown in. How has the balance shown up here in the first half? It, it, it's a good balance once we get the, the people the ball that can put the ball in the hole. I think turnovers are, are killing us. We got to keep them out of transition, and then they they are out hustling us on the boards. That was my next question. That's where you've made your money is on the rebounding. What do you say to the kids at the locker room? Oh, we got to want it more than they do. Obviously, they are they are playing inspired basketball. We got to get some of that inspiration of what we've done all season long. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Greenville, South Carolina is the place. Tennessee and South Carolina, they're the two teams battling for this one. Gamecocks up by six as we get set for the start of the third quarter. No surprise that it started with the SEC Player of the Year, Aaliyah Boston. She came out, went five for five in this game. Double figure points already for Aaliyah. And then Zaya Cook helped her out in the second quarter. 12 of her 14 points coming in the second frame. But Tennessee ending the half on an 8-2 run to challenge the only undefeated team in the nation. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Holly Rowe with you. Tennessee with a little bit of a push, and it was led by their leaders, Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson. Well, Jordan Horston is doing a really good job of getting those paint points, and that's pretty impressive when you look at going against the size of South Carolina. How is she doing it? Well, she's going off the drive, and at times when she can't get to the rim, understanding to use that full up. And if she gets isolated one-on-one, -on -one, forget about it. This is a 6-2 Jordan Horston, and if she misses the first one, she's going to get the putback. She's got that length, and that has paid off. She's got 14 points. She's got five rebounds in the first half, and I think she's just getting started. Holly, how is Kelly Har Harper coming out of the locker room? Really good. She thought that they did a nice job on the boards. And when I asked her how did they do it, she said, we're defending so that we're in a position to box out, being very mindful of where they are and how they're putting a body on South Carolina's big, tall players. She said, we are pretty gassed right now, though. And when I said, hey, will you try to slow it down in the second half? She said, we're thinking about it. But against South Carolina, you want to be in transition. You don't want to go against their half court great defense and their length. It is a real dilemma right now. We'll see how they handle it in the second half. When you are going after a tournament title, you could sleep tomorrow. You got all week. You got all week to recover. You got to leave it on the line. Tennessee ending the half on an 8-2 run. Jordan Horston had six of those points. She's got the basketball now. Back to Jordan Walker. South Carolina in a zone. Really going to dare Tennessee to shoot it from the perimeter. Horston will take the shot. Trying to get her own rebound. Rakia Jackson gets it. Jackson going right at Boston. And Rakia stole it from Bree Beal. Tennessee's going to have a third opportunity here on the opening possession. 
Jackson puts it in the hole. Tennessee believes. Quick bucket for South Carolina. That's important because South Carolina, they have had one field goal in the last five minutes and 22 seconds of the second quarter. 16 now for Zaya Cook. And South Carolina changing up now, going back to a man-to-man. -man. Rakia Jackson's going to shoot it anyway, feeling it. She's in double figures. Rakia comes into this game having 20-plus points in her last eight games. Well, she's averaging 30 points here in Greenville, South Carolina at the tournament. Level up. Victoria Saxton going against Rakia Jackson, and Jackson whistled, whistled for the foul. That'll be her second. Rakia Jackson has, is that versatile player that can play inside and out. She can post you up, and she can also take you from the outside. There she shows her range from three. Well, guys, keep in mind, she is a transfer coming in from Mississippi State last year, and it's taken some time for her to get that feeling. When I asked her why has she been on a tear lately, what has changed, she said, my teammates trust me. They're giving me confidence. But more importantly, I'm getting to my spots on the floor. And when I followed up and said, well, what are your good spots on the floor, she shrugged, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I love the confidence. It is pretty much everywhere, but it is in specific range, in specific offenses, instead of a free-for-all. When she was at Mississippi State, they ran a dribble drive, and it was really at times unexpected of where her shots were going to come from. Now against Tennessee, I think they are pretty predictable of where Kelly Harper wants Rakia Jackson shooting the basketball. That shot by Jackson a little bit short. Bree Beal trying to bully her way inside. Stays with South Carolina. Look at the difference last season to this season, Rakia Jackson. Look at the field goal percentage skyrocket. Well, you, you look, they're getting the same, a num same number of points, but the efficiency that Rakia Jackson is playing with in the Tennessee Lady Vols system. Zaya Cook up to 18. She's shooting 60%. Tess Darby overshoots. Rakia's double team, triple team. Jump ball, possession arrow, South Carolina. Zaya Cook right here at the top of the elbow. Watch her come off this screen underneath out of bounds. And right when that window opens, she takes full advantage. Zaya Cook has 18 points. She had 19 points against Tennessee 10 days ago. Boston, fouled by Caroline Striplin. It's the second on Striplin. It's one of the things that makes Aaliyah Boston so valuable going to the next level is her ability to be strong to the right, but she also is just as strong going left. Look, in the first seven minutes of this game, she went five for five, only taking two shots since then. She's still shooting a high percentage, but what South Carolina do, has to do is be intentional about getting her the basketball. That rim hung on to it and said, I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to pull it on through the hoop. Well, they heard the arena already played the made it music, the little <laughs> noise. Yeah, so you can't it had to fall in. Yeah, you can't run that back. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, Aaliyah Boston became South Carolina's all-time leading rebounder. That resume keeps growing. Now, we pointed out coming out of the half, Jordan Borson is the leading scorer for Tennessee. Who does Dawn Staley put on her but Bree Beal? This is going to be an interesting matchup to keep an eye on. Bree Beal, her primary assignment, only gets four points a game and only shoots 22% from the field. Defense is the name of her game. Walker driving on Raven Johnson, and she's fouled. First on Raven. 
Raven has played every minute of this ball game. Now she started this game at Kiara Fletcher. If you're just joining us, not available, was injured yesterday. A lower leg injury. She's officially day to day. Walker gets the first. Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball, part six of the seven part documentary looks at years 2000 through 2011. Pat Summit and Candace Parker go back to back, and Simone Augustus stars for LSU. It's Monday at 9 Eastern over on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. You know, a lot of history of this Tennessee program, eight national titles to their name. Olivia Boston is fouled. A lot of history in this program, too. Excuse me, in this tournament. Will Aaliyah Boston go to the free throw line, Holly? Well, I feel like we've told these stories a lot, but if you're just joining us and you're new to watching Aaliyah Boston, she has simply been one of the best players in the country since she stepped on campus at South Carolina. But it came at a great personal cost. She grew up on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and when she was 12 years old, she had a great coach. Coach Bruley said, if you really want to pursue basketball and be great, you've got to leave the island. Her mom, Cleone, took that to heart and sent her and her sister to live with their aunt in Massachusetts at just 12 years old. She had to sacrifice, and there is the gorgeous court that she grew up playing on in her middle school and high school. Got to visit there with her and visit with Coach Bruley and watch how she grew up as a young woman. She sacrificed a lot to be here today. And that family, I'm just telling you, there are depths and, and wonderful people in her family that have supported her along the way. But Aaliyah Boston has been absolute sunshine and productivity ever since she stepped on the court. And Holly, she has never shied away from the hard work that it has taken to make her the player she is today. Well, and if you know Aaliyah's parents and how they have instilled that in her, and she does it with such a humble heart. She wants to learn all that she can, be the best that she can, but in the process, she uplifts the players that are around her. She's projected to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Tess Darby. She's a three-point shooter for Tennessee, hasn't been able to hit today. And the different combinations for Tennessee can affect their productivity on the offensive side of the ball. You see Rakia Jackson going back to the table. She just needed to quick, get a quick minute. Free peel over to Boston at the free throw line. Short and Horston's gonna rebound this. Three minute scoring drop for Tennessee and a turnover by Tennessee into the hands of Zaya Cook. 20 points for Zaya. Nine to two run Gamecocks. That's a third steal for Zaya Cook today. You hear that? The fans are in Greenville. Now it's a danger zone for Tennessee. South Carolina up 10. You let this crowd get into it. Can be very difficult. The Lady Vols need to stop right now. And Tennessee gone to a zone. Raven Johnson all alone. Horson was trying to jump, dump it off to Hollingshed. Two and a half minute scoring drought for Tennessee and South Carolina up by 10. I mean, this class is pretty special. They called themselves Freshies in the four years ago. They continue to call themselves Freshies. That's our name on text message. If we have like Instagram group chats, the name is Freshies Part 2 or like Freshies Part 3, and it's just the name that we stuck with. Coming in, everyone was like, oh, this top class in the country, but are they gonna stay together? Through COVID, through a lot of our personal issues, through it all. We all understood that it was bigger than us. It seems that come in together and stick together. That's hard to find. And from the jump, we knew that this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to stick together. We wanted to graduate and be that dominant class. I like the unity of it. 
and the bond and the sisterhood they've established. They came in as the number one recruiting class in 2019. They haven't stopped working. Two Final Fours, a national championship. They've only lost eight games. Could have been more, too, but freshman year was COVID, and they canceled the NCAA tournament. They only lost three SEC games total in their career. That's amazing. What have you seen from them today now that they're seniors playing in this championship game? Well, you've got the defense and the scoring from Bree Bill. She's had her hands full. You have Zaya Cook that's really done it on the defensive end, getting deflections and headed the other direction. The spark off the bench from Letitia Me here, and you can't say enough about what and the leadership that Aaliyah Brawl Boston brings night in and night out, and especially today. This is Jasmine Franklin at the free throw line for Tennessee. They have not had a field goal in four and a half minutes. But they'll take those three free throws. It was just a six point game at halftime, a six point lead for South Carolina. This has been a good ball game. Bree Beal is going to swat it back out on a fresh 20 for the Gamecocks. But what I'm seeing is you've got Camila Cardoso at 6-7. There's a mismatch underneath. All they got to do is throw it up to the corner of the board, and she has a scoring opportunity. Look at the pass out to Zaya. Short, and she tried to save it. It'll be Tennessee basketball. Look at the height advantage of Camila Cardoso. That's to Jasmine Franklin underneath. It's not very often she doesn't have a height advantage at 6'7". So offensively, give her the basketball. She hasn't scored today and just one rebound. Puck it. Gamecock ball. Cardoso is going to go to the high post. And Tennessee in a zone. Now in that zone, if you get ball reversal, then get your bigs down underneath. The pass to Cardoso? Was that a pass? Sure. <laughs> Bree Bill's going to call it. A, that's an assist for Bree Bill. <laughs> Cardoso had 12 points, 12 rebounds, five blocks yesterday against Ole Miss. And a traveling violation is going to give the ball back to South Carolina. This could have been a shot pass. That was a shot pass. She does not officially get the assist for that, just for the record. Yeah, she was just faking everybody yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Camouflage. That's a benefit that you have when you've got six, seven underneath. You can miss really bad, and it looked like an assist. Cardoso, there you go. It's that simple. And Cardoso has tremendous hands. You just throw it up around the corner of the backboard, and she will go get it. Franklin in trouble and carrying call on Tennessee. Back-to-back -back turnovers. I'm running back. Just keep Cardoso down behind the back of that zone. Free Hall. Largest lead for South Carolina, the Gamecocks, seven points in a row. Predominantly Garnet in the stands in Greenville. Sandstorm blaring. 7-0 run for the Gamecocks. Bree Hall, 
just comes right in off the bench. The contribution from the reserves of South Carolina has been huge this season. Holly, the crowd, you can feel it in here. Yeah, this is a huge crowd, a wonderful day, but this has been the norm in SEC women's basketball all season long. South Carolina, LSU, Georgia have all had sellouts this season. Across the board in the conference, 75% of the schools have built to capacity this year. And this game today is another record. 12,203, third most in SEC tournament history. But the weekend, guys, 57,801 people have come here to Greenville, South Carolina this weekend, the most attended SEC women's basketball tournament in history. Holly, let's go. And the product has been great. We have seen everything this week, and why wouldn't you want to be here? We've well, had great games on day one. The two lower seeds won in advance. We had drama on Thursday, weather on Friday, Saturday was great. Here we go. Offensive foul, Leticia me here. Her first. Tennessee has not scored in three minutes. What's allowed South Carolina to pull ahead? Well, scoring off of Tennessee's turnovers. The defense has really picked up for South Carolina and they've been able to get it and go. Tennessee, all for its last 11 shots. And Tennessee started switching in that zone. That's what gave LSU problems. South Carolina was ready for it. Jordan Walker, top of the key, no. Bree Peel. And she's fouled, running down the floor by Sarah Puckett. Freeville is so strong. I got to believe the way that she has played this season has helped her WNBA stock to rise as well. She's already demonstrated how tough she is on the defensive end. She's got great handles. She can handle the basketball. She is a big rebounding guard. Projected as the seventh pick in the WNBA draft. We're seeing a preview of what's to come for the WNBA in this game alone. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about Aaliyah Boston, Rakia Jackson, and Jordan Horst, and Bree Bill also. How about Zaya? Is Zaya Cook in there? I think Leticia Mehir is getting looks as well. Horst going to pull back the scoring drought, getting close to four minutes for Tennessee. Tennessee missed an opportunity to go two for one. Back door Jackson. It's open. Eight seconds in the quarter. Rakia Jackson with the slot. And the heave. Ten minutes till we crown a champion. South Carolina leading Tennessee 55 to 42. Someone's about to cut down nets in Greenville. Ten minutes to go in our SEC Tournament Championship game. South Carolina's defense, it has come with them to Greenville, and it's showing up today. Tennessee just shooting 37% from the field. They've forced Tennessee into 11 turnovers and scored 15 points off of those. They've only given up 42 points to Tennessee. And the Lady Vols are going to have to find a way to score. Tess Darby back in the game because South Carolina was sitting in that zone. If they come back in it again, Darby's going to have to get some shots. Holly was in the Tennessee huddle. Well, guys, obviously the score, this is an uphill battle for the Lady Vols, but there was a very positive attitude in that last huddle. The players are looking at each other saying, we got this, we got this, let's go, let's go. Still a lot of energy, and Kelly Harper to end the huddle looked at everybody and said, listen, let's just go out and have fun, make a play, be loose. She wants them to enjoy this. 
She's going to like that. that. Yes, she's going to love that from Jillian Hollingshed. Those are two players we were talking about in the break that I thought Kelly Harper needed to go back to. Hollingshed and Tess Darby. Tess Darby from the outside in the way, the aggressiveness and the determination of which Jillian Hollingshed is playing with, getting that all of offensive rebound put back into the free throw line. That could be the spark of a run for Tennessee. Three-point play for Jillian Hollingshed. And she did that to LSU yesterday. Big plays down the stretch in the second half. Bree Hall. Cardoso, offensive rebound. A me here offensive rebound. And a reset. Still, Tennessee is plus one on the glass. South Carolina has only been out rebounded one time this season. It was by Stanford. Tess Darby has it. Well, Leah Boston on Tess Darby right now. Horston. Well, Rakia Jackson has the responsibility of Aaliyah Boston. The offensive rebounds right now are huge for South Carolina. They're one of the top teams in doing that. 49% of the time, they're rebounding their own miss. That is the highest since we started tracking this in 2009. Well, you go into the game plan when you play South Carolina and you think, well, you've got to keep them off the offensive glass. That's easier said than done. Yeah, how do you do that? Well, I, the only way to do that is that you have to, when the shot goes up, your goal is not to get the basketball, but to keep your person from getting the offensive rebound. That has to be your first priority. They only had two offensive rebounds in the first half, but here in the second half, seven O-boards. <laughs> Champ Week rolling on tonight. Two more women's title games. Coming up next, we're gonna have the Big Ten Championship game between Ohio State and Iowa here on ESPN. And on ESPN2, it's the Pac-12 title game, Washington State and UCLA. I was really shocked to see Ohio State upset Indiana, but J.C. Sheldon is back. She missed the majority of the season with a lower leg injury. She is back. She is the brains for the Buckeyes. Boston to Cardoso to the free throw line. Fouled by Hollingshell, her third. That's the secret weapon that South Carolina has, though I don't think it's much of a secret because she's 6'7". Yeah. But when you want to <laughs> close a game out, look, that's pretty much guaranteed production. Just going a high-low from Aaliyah Boston inside to Camilla Cardoso. And guys, Coach Don Staley told us last week that Camilla is the separator. She is our separator. No one else in the country can bring in a player off the bench like her. And she's absolutely right, not only at 6'7", but the growth she has shown defensively, her ability to rebound, and her offense looking for it more this season. Plus, when they play her and a Boston together, separator indeed. She's been fantastic. You know, Holly, I was talking to Dawn about that today at shoot around, and she said, look, I think Camilla has now understanding her role, how she can have production on this team. I think when Cardoso first got to South Carolina, she deferred to Aaliyah Boston. Now she is demanding and wanting the basketball inside. Hollingshed in trouble, trying to get around South Carolina's defense. Look how strong Cardoso is in the mix. And then the pass out. Layup short. And a foul called late.
It's the first on Tess Darby. The trailing official saw the touch to the head by Tess Darby. Kelly Harper is not happy about that. I don't know that it was enough yeah. to really designate as a foul. Cook's bringing it out. So impressed with how the red shirt freshman Raven Johnson has handled this role today and having to play all of this ball game. Yeah, started the game, no Kiara Fletcher today. Day to day with a lower leg injury. Third career start for Raven, and it's in the SEC Tournament Championship game. Walker, that's tough against Camilla Cardoso. That's the Cardoso effect. Look at how Cardoso's running the floor. Yeah, you got to feed the big girl. Almost had it slipped off her fingertips. And Raven Johnson looked over at Dawn Staley, and Dawn Staley clapped her hands and said, yes, that was the right idea. You were pushing the ball in transition. That is a turnover Dawn Staley will take. They've talked so many times about how Raven Johnson sees things. She sees the next step before it even happens. She's got that futuristic vision that she would love to have in a point guard. South Carolina calls timeout here. South Carolina up 59-45. Who's leading them in scoring? It is Zaya Cook with 21 points, seventh time this season with 20 or more points in a game. And Cookie ain't done either. She started this game bringing a defensive presence. She has three steals in this ball game. Not ones that just land in her hand, but she's gone after it. And then she has converted that into points for South Carolina. She has really taken a focus on the defensive side, and that has got her offense clicking. 21 points, four rebounds, three steals. She had 14 points yesterday. Meanwhile, Tennessee on a three-minute scoring drought. I think the impact of Camilla Cardoso has been huge. She has slowed down the production of Tennessee in the paint. And Camilla Cardoso in the second half. They're going to overturn this. It'll be Tennessee basketball. In the second half, Cardoso, seven points, seven rebounds, and a block. Well, you called it at halftime. You expected she had low production in that first half and said she was about to go off in the second half, and she's done that. We saw it happen a week ago today against Georgia on their senior day in Columbia. If she's not go getting going, then South Carolina will make it an emphasis to give her the basketball. Rakia at the elbow, no. Jump ball, South Carolina basketball. The South Carolina team has won 37 straight games. The last time they lost was in the SEC tournament final last year to Kentucky. The impressive thing that I have seen from South Carolina this year is there are teams that have made their runs and they have forced South Carolina to win at times from the outside. They have forced South Carolina to play on the inside. At times high scoring, at times low scoring, but Don Staley has found the formula to just win. Bucket for Bree Beal. And Horston ends a four minute scoring drought for Tennessee. Tennessee's got to make a run right now. You got to look to try to put stops together. Cardoso, the kick back out. They'll swing it over to Bree Beal. They try the other side with Boston, who's double teamed. 
Well, next Sunday, we'll have the exclusive live announcement of the 68 team NCAA Women's Championship field. We'll break down every team, every matchup in each region, 8 Eastern on ESPN and the app. A bonus hour of coverage at 9 Eastern on ESPNU. March is here, so don't forget the ESPN Tournament Challenge is back. You can scan the QR code, download the app, and play the number one bracket game, create a group, invite your friends, and get ready for the madness. I just got chills. Courtney, you and I will be a part of that selection show. Holly will, too. And Holly Rowe. I can't believe it's a week from today. You think about the teams that are sitting there with everything that has happened in these conference tournaments. There are some teams that definitely know they're in. Some. They're not real sure, and they're just waiting for their names to be called. Somewhere Charlie Cream is not sleeping. I just imagine him like a mad scientist with formulas and whiteboards drawing who's in, who's out, and what happens determined by what happens at every game on the set second as the conclusions occur. With a lab coat on. <laughs> <laughs> Horson going to the free throw line. Uh, Jordan Horson had 14 points in the first half for Tennessee, just two here in the second half. Second foul against Raven Johnson. So the committee is having a field day with the outcome of games over the last couple of days. I was up late last night watching Seton Hall and Creighton in that dramatic ending. One of two for Horst and Cardoso with the rebound on our tiptoes to stay out of bounds. At some point, Tennessee is going to have to think about it. They can score a bucket, getting a pressure set in the full court. Fourth foul against Caroline Striplin. And Tennessee yesterday, the comeback. It was impressive. It tied their largest comeback in, po in school postseason history, trailed by 17 points. And Kelly Harper asked him at the half, do you want to do this? And the answer was yes. And she said she had, they had a different look in their eye. She saw the determination in their eye after she asked that question. And they brought it. Jillian Hollingshead one is one of those players that had that look. Tess Darby got it. Caroline Strickland had it as well to go along with Ricky and Jordan. They need to dig deep here. Time running out on Tennessee. They need a bucket now so that they can get their full court pressure set. They need to bring some defense, try to get some turnovers. Otherwise, South Carolina can be very patient and use a lot of clock. South Carolina pushed it back down the floor very quickly after Horston's 19th point. Throw it up, Cardoso will throw it down. So you 11. Gotta, you got to put pressure defensively in the backcourt so that they can't just slice you apart and then throw it up to 6 7. Strickland for three. Caroline Strickland with range. This thing ain't over. Tennessee can get hot. Now they bring the full court pressure. Boston to Beal, over to a waiting Zaya Cook by herself all day for Cookie. 24 points. Going for the steal now. Jump ball, it's going to stay with Tennessee. The freshies, the senior class. You can see the determination on their face, specifically Zaya Cook. Stripling trying for range again, no. 
Now the Gamecocks just want to use as much clock as they can. Don Staley asking. Her team to settle down, crowd fires up. There's a foul away from the shot. And that's the fifth on Caroline Strickland. Jillian Hollingshed will replace her, but Stripling's day is done for Tennessee. Five points, two rebounds, two assists. She had to battle down low. It's never easy in the paint against South Carolina. Definitely not, but she did a tremendous job being the sophomore coming in, playing with such composure here in Greenville. Three Gamecock scorers, Aliyah, Zaya, Camilla Cardoso. They've combined for 53 points. That's as many as Tennessee has scored today. Horston behind the back to Hollingshed. Covered up and fouled. But postseason-wise, as it continues for this Tennessee team, they're a five seed. They moved to 17 overall with the win over LSU yesterday. Charlie Cream going into this one said they needed a competitive game and a Villanova loss or a win today to get a top 16 seed, meaning they would host. You know that everybody in Knoxville is sitting there with their fingers crossed. They want to be able to be one of those top 16 teams and possibly host the first round of the NCAA tournament. We know a week from today, still two minutes left, but all those seeds will be announced a week from today on Selection Sunday. Well, Tennessee's got to bring some pressure if they're going to try to chip away because South Carolina is just going to use the clock. Cook floater got her own rebound. It didn't hit the rim. Now the shot clock resets. Now the most important thing for South Carolina, just not foul. Rakia Jackson, the smooth shot. She has 17. Pretty dump off to Aaliyah Boston. 18 for Boston. A minute to go. Last year in this game, South Carolina lost to Kentucky. They came out determined today. <laughs> the two best friends, Jordan Horston and Zaya Cook, slapped hands of congratulations. I believe Horston can see Zaya Cook. Tremendous game in her last SEC tournament. 24 points. Three players in double figures for South Carolina. Unbreakable, unstoppable, undefeated South Carolina. A seventh SEC tournament title for the Gamecocks.
so they didn't want that feeling from last year. Not at all. And they had to really, they had to live with that throughout this whole season. That was in the back of their minds when they came back this summer in their training, in their preparation. Yes, they won a national championship, but it was unfinished business when it comes to this SEC tournament. And after going undefeated, they were ready to take care of it here in Greenville. Dodd Staley is with Ollie. Well, Coach, this was a six-point game at the half. What did you ask for in the locker room at halftime, and what did you receive? I mean, I just wanted us to toughen it out. You know, I thought uh, the physicality, we had to take it up to another notch. I thought we had to rebound a little bit better. I thought we had to get out and run a little bit more. So just ask them to gut it up so we don't have a repeat performance that, like we had the last time we were here. 32 and 0, but it's not easy. I see your kids fighting out here, working out here. How hard is what they're doing? It's really, really hard. It's, it's, it's really, really hard. I just got some great players who believe in each other. Um, they only want to win, so the sacrifices that come with that, they embrace them. And I, I know I probably won't ever have another team like, like this, so I'm savoring the moment. One championship down, one more big one to go. How do you reset, refocus, and enjoy this moment, but look ahead? I'm just, we're just going to enjoy this moment. We got spring break. They got a few days off. We'll come back on Friday. We try to figure that out. But we're going to enjoy this moment. Please do. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. South Carolina is still undefeated. Carolyn, they have won 38 straight games. And they have been challenged. This kind of times where it's come close, but this team has come together. When you look at with this, the Freshies and that group that came together when they first came to South Carolina, what was the one thing that Don Staley always talked about that group? They're competitive. Said they, she didn't ever have to coach effort when it came into practice. They came into work and it has paid off all four years and now they are SEC champions again. Competitive and unselfish. A hundred percent. That is so true. And that is when you have, when you look, you got five talented players coming in together. A lot of times nowadays, two or three want to go to a program where they can go stand out and be a star. These five came in and that what they wanted to do is they wanted to be champions and they sacrificed a little bit of themselves for the bigger picture, for the bigger prize for them to win and really get accolades as a collective group. In 2015, South Carolina faced Tennessee in the SEC Tournament Final. They won their first title, and now they have seven SEC Tournament titles. Dynasty. That's the best way to describe what Don Staley has built in Columbia, South Carolina. Already two national titles to the program's name. You know this freshy class. They're looking towards the NCAA tournament. They want another one to put on their resume. When you get a taste, you want to go back for more. And now that they have been there, they know what it takes as well. Like Don said, they will take a couple of days spring break. They'll come back and go to work on a mission. We talk about the freshies so much. They're so important to South Carolina. And they're with Holly. Well, this group started out together. You call each other the Freshies. How does it feel to walk off the court as SEC champs? One of the greatest classes in history right now. I mean, it feels amazing. I mean, we came in and we did it. And to go out like this is just special. How do you feel? You were such a great factor here in this tournament. Uh, my teammates hyped me up uh, whenever they need me. Uh, I just got to step up, so I'm excited yeah, for the group. You were huge today, particularly in the second half. What's your mindset in this moment? I'm happy. I'm extremely proud of our team and everything we've been doing. And we're not done yet. We still got work to do. I know the playing time hasn't been there for you, but you practiced so hard. They need you so much. What is this moment for you? I mean, it's just so special that we've all stuck together and done this like all four years. It's just it's amazing to be a part of. Only eight losses in this history of this class. How have you done it and been there for each other, Brie? I mean, it just explains how we play together. Our chemistry is out of this world. I mean, look at us. It's a look at us. Okay, Coach said you're going to enjoy it now, but I know you are so focused on what is still ahead. When do you turn that page and start to think about what's at stake moving forward? I mean, we want to win a national championship, um, and that's 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 what we want to do, and we're going to do it. All right, Greenville is the side of the Sweet 16. What do you say if you all are back here in just a couple of weeks? 
Yep, sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. That, that'll do it. Yeah. And that'll do it for us. <laughs> how about that? When you look at South Carolina, everything they've done, how this team has improved this season, what stands out the most? That it is one through 14. Don Staley, and I've said this before, it's like when you play poker. When you have five cards in your hand, say two aren't what you need. You can put them back on the bench. You put pull two more and put them on deck, and it just make things happen. Don Staley can just really push the button of whatever her team does or needs to come up with victories. 32-0 on the season. The pursuit of perfection continues for South Carolina. A seventh SEC tournament title here. Zaya Cook leading the way for South Carolina. 24 points today. The Gamecocks expected to be the number one seed in the NCAA tournament when selection show rolls around a week from tonight. It's been a pleasure to be with you this week in Greenville. South Carolina, your SEC tournament champions for a seventh time.